My name is Jennifer. I am 43 years old and I'm addicted to Spanish soap operas. Thanks to various streaming services, I've been watching one new drama after another and I'm totally addicted. Spanish soap operas are always full of drama, but there was a real drama in my life too. Let me tell you a story. It was almost six years ago. I was living with my husband, who was older than me. We were never blessed with children, but I thought it wouldn't be so bad to spend some quality time together. Only until this very moment. I received a call from my best friend and child friend, Monica, who even came to our wedding. Hey, it's been a while. I thought I should tell you that I got divorced. Oh, I see. You went through a hard time, huh? Let's hang out and grab some drinks soon. After going home, I was about to tell my husband about the news, but my husband said, I know, Monica's got divorced, right? What? I knew my husband is aware of me and Monica are best friends, but how did you know about her divorce? I'm sure I haven't told you about that yet. At my words, my husband looked at me as if he realized something is not going right. I, I heard you say something about it, he laughed. I don't remember saying anything about it. I was confused, but I continued. Yeah, she's divorced, so we're going out for a drink next time. Um, I'll go with you, and the three of us can comfort Monica. Wait, you're coming too? No? Um, I don't know. I thought this will be like a girl's night out, so... I couldn't understand why my husband wanted to come at all. But he told me to ask Monica anyway. I agreed and told her about it later. I thought she would say it's better to be without my husband, because it's a girl's night out. To my surprise, her answer was, Great! Let's all have a drink together. Which I didn't expect. I'd rather not have a drink with my husband. And in the end, I was the only one who was left feeling a bit strange. However, the three of us, me, my husband, and Monica, gathered together. The night out was a lot of fun, actually. Mostly Monica complained about her ex-husband's bad behaviors and lack of consideration. We responded to her to make it funny. It was more like she had the whole place to herself than we are all having a good time. But Monica, who just got divorced, seems to be having a good time. So I was glad that the three of us had gotten together that night. Until that moment. I had to use the restroom for a minute, and when I came back, I hesitated for a moment before returning to my seat. The way Monica and my husband looked into each other's eyes and how they engaged in conversation. I don't know why, but it seems too intimate. They haven't seen each other since our wedding. I wonder how they get back being so friendly just by having a few drinks. I felt as if I was putting a damper on a date between two lovers. I return to my seat. And when I sit down, the two have returned to their normal atmosphere acting like nothing had happened. I wonder if I was overthinking, but I couldn't get rid of that blur. In the meantime, it was almost closing time, so I decided to pay the bill and leave the restaurant. Monica was very drunk, and then my husband said, I'm going to take her home. His nonchalant attitude caught me off guard. He said, I'll take her home, not let's take her home. I'm not as drunk as she, but I'm drunk too. Moreover, I am your wife. She lives alone and she's wobbly. It's too late. So you take a cab and go home yourself, alright? Huh? If you take her in the cab, she'll go straight to her apartment, won't she? No, I'm worried about her. I doubt she gets to her apartment herself. I mean... Did I tell you that Monica is now living alone in an apartment? It's possible that she told him while I was in bathroom. 
but the discomfort piled up and turned into disbelief. Okay, I got it then. I'll go home myself. With that, I did go home leaving the two in the spot. As for me, of course I didn't want to leave her alone with my husband. But then it occurred to me. It was more convenient for me to go home alone to investigate their relation. As soon as I arrived home, I stepped into my husband's study room. This room, which was not a bedroom, but a private study room for my husband, might possibly keep the information I was seeking. But in case I could easily find the answers in our own house, it would also be quite insulting, I thought, with such a conflict in my mind. As I was looking into the shelf, I found the answer to my question. A single basic photo album. I didn't remember seeing it when I moved this place. With a bad intuition, I flipped through the pages of I shouldn't have looked at it. It's too late. It was full of pictures of my husband and Monica smiling happily. Judging by Monica's hair and my husband's clothes, it seemed that they had been secretly meeting since shortly after we got married. The two of them had been in an intense relationship for over 10 years. I was so angry and combined it with my drunkenness, I felt like I needed to throw up. As I was running off to the bathroom, my husband came home. Oh, you threw up. You drank that much? He rubbed my back and I told him not to touch me and slapped his head. Hey, it's me. Hold on a second. I'll get you some water. Apparently, my husband thinks I'm too drunk that I don't know who's who anymore. Yes, I know who you are. I'm totally sane. I just hated him. I wanted to get so drunk instead that I lost my mind. Then it wouldn't have been so painful. Go wait for me in the living room. We need to talk. What? I glanced at my husband and I took a moment to catch my breath. Why are you in such a bad mood? Is it because I dropped her off? Acting like he was trying to be funny or something. Well, I'll just have to adjust my tone then. Now, for the first question, what does this picture show? I confronted him with an album I had found in his room. I just showed him the cover, but his face got paler and paler. Then, the second question. This one is a yes and no quiz. Is there any wife in the world who can look at this picture and be okay with it? I mean, you know? Question 3. How do I feel right now? Go ahead. Give your answer. When I asked him for an answer, my husband became silent. Why don't you say something instead of just keeping your mouth shut? He makes it sound like it's my fault. Really getting on my nerves. Okay, I cheated. I'm really stupid. I am really sorry. I would feel better if he just apologized and cried like a baby. It's not fair to be silent. And then my husband finally opened his mouth. She's the one for me. Monica and I, we both married to the wrong partners. After all the twists and turns, we finally found each other. I feel like we're soulmates who share a common destiny. What are you, a poet of all sudden? I was completely speechless. Suddenly he's talking about soulmates and spirituality. I know I made a mistake marrying you. Our soul vibrations are different and we can't be happy together. I believe this is a test of fate for me and her. No. He's gone completely to the other dimension. You and I are not connected to a spiritual level. I hope you understand. I didn't know what the hell that means at all. I only figured it out that you and I are hopelessly incompatible. My best friend betrayed me. My husband betrayed me. And honestly, I can't even cry. But I'm willing to give him to Monica. Because he's such a bad husband. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Except that you're speaking English. I don't think you and I are compatible either. I know you're crazy. 
But I don't understand what you're talking about. I knew it. If that's how you feel, then you will agree to divorce me peacefully. Right? I want to be with Monica. I see. So you're not going to pay for alimony? Then I have an idea. Um, you know, this is not good. I don't think I'm in the right spiritual tuning. I can't hear you at all, whereas I could hear you as a moment ago. I told him in a completely flat, broken voice. What? My husband asked back. I responded to his ridiculous divorce request with a ridiculous response. What's the matter with you, Jen? I remained silent. I kept ignoring him and went into the shower room. My husband was being beside me, shouting, What kind of person you are in the middle of an important conversation? I'll never be free unless you agree to divorce me. But I ignored it. I'll be free to do what I want. And you will be free to be. From this day on, you are as much as a piece of trash to me. You were about the size of a or mold in the bathtub. It will be nothing but a useless inanimate object. Prepare yourself. The next day, my husband went to work in a foul mood. I didn't greet him in the morning, of course, and I didn't serve him, nor did I prepare his tie as you. I had given myself a day off after the night out. I got up just in time for my husband to leave. Well, I'll be living alone from today. How about I tidy up my room? In the evening, my husband came home. I heard him on the front porch saying, I'm home. But I heard nothing. I didn't answer, of course. That's when my husband shouted that all his shoes were missing. Hey, Jen! Jen! Where are my shoes? Whoa, wait! Why are you start eating without me? Yes, I threw away your shoes. It's normal to eat alone because I live here alone. I have quite a bit of money saved up for living expenses. So I am eating a lot of expensive steak with a fine champagne. I didn't make eye contact with my husband, just watched TV and laughed as I ate. Jen, are you even listening to me? I just served myself another glass of champagne without even knowing he's here. You've gotta be kidding me. We'll talk after I get out of the shower, okay? I wonder if he get upstairs to get his pajamas. Then I heard a thumbing and clattering sound coming down the stairs. Jen, why is there nothing in my room? Where are my pajamas? <laughs> I live alone. What is up with you? I can't take a bath. You're saying I don't even need to put on the clothes? I just thought I live alone and I don't. I quickly finished my meal and get up, showing no reaction. My husband followed me. Where's my food? Go buy your own food. I have to tell you again and again that I live alone. I had already finished my bath, so I went straight into the bedroom. As a side note, I even got rid of my husband's toothbrush. I can't wait to see how he'll get ready tomorrow morning. But when I woke up in the morning, my husband was sitting in his chair, in a pose just like the statue, The Thinker by Rodin. I guess he was in such a hurry last night that he didn't take a bath. His hair was sticky and messy, and his thin hair makes the scalp stand out. Really looks like a barcode. Then my husband noticed that I had woken up. He stood in front of me. Just trying to desperately get in my son. He got down on his knees to say he was sorry. I honestly didn't expect him to go this far. It hurts when you grow me. But I have repeatedly done terrible things to you without paying attention to how you feel. I'm sorry for that. That's exactly right. But I didn't respond in any way. I want us to start over. I didn't expect him to say that. I was stunned. I didn't say a word, but I gave my husband the most disgusted look. No, no, no. I can't live with the spiritual hair cheating triple trouble guy. You don't like it? My reaction shocked him. You would think you know that much if you think about what you did. Please, 
Say something. I'll do whatever you say. Yes, here it comes. This is why I kept quiet all these times. For a long time, whenever we would have a fight, I would choose to ignore him. Because my husband would say he would do anything for me. He would buy me a purse or something, and that would be the end of it. So this time, I knew he would use his usual tactics if he was cornered. Okay then, do as I say. The words I've been waiting to say come out of my mouth, and I smile hat in knee. My husband at his mouth like monks cry. A look of despair on his face. It felt good. I wanted to see that face. No, no, I don't mean that. My husband was confused by my unexpected. Re- I have no intention to accept any other terms. Do you really think you can get away with the infidelity after all this time? I'm going to take both of them. Otherwise, I will do everything in my power to make. He saw the look in my eyes. Okay. Thanks. I smiled back at him. I will seek compensation from both of you and Monica for this matter. Okay. I will also tell her ex-husband everything. She will probably get the paperwork for alimony, and so will you. Good luck paying them. What do you mean? Come on, stand up, and take your work stuff with you. I forced my husband to carry his bag and dragged him to the front door. Where are you taking me? Outside. I am getting this house, so it's my house now. It's not nice to have strangers in my house. I don't like it. Wait, can't you at least wait until after the divorce? That's not gonna happen. Why not? What the hell, Jen? You started talking all of a sudden, and then you were so cold. Shut up and get out! I pushed my husband out the front door with all the force. The only reason I was able to exert that kind of power in a woman's body was because all of this stress and anger I'd built up over the years. I guess you have to accumulate negative energy too. After that, before the divorce papers were served, all of us. My husband and I, and Monica and her husband, got together to talk. Monica confessed she had fallen in love with my husband at our wedding. Approached him right after, and their affair started. They kept in touch discreetly to keep their relationship secret until hopefully they were both divorced and free. They have been cheating on both families for over a decade. Monica's ex-husband was quite depressed when he first learned of her infidelity. I didn't have any feelings when I heard that story. I'd rather wanted to thank them, 'cause I would use any facts as evidence for my alimony claim. After being kicked out of the house, my husband moved in with Monica. But later, when she received documents from both me and her ex-husband demanding alimony, she was brought back to re. We can't remarry if we are both in debt. I will find someone with a better financial status. She gave him a bum rub, and kicked him out of the apartment. Wasn't she the one, the soulmate of yours, who's connected with you on a spiritual level? And you're losing her over money. Needless to say, I was disgusted to hear that story. Suck it up. This is what you get for betraying your wife. Six years have passed since then. In the middle of paying alimony, my ex-husband retired. He was forced to spend most of his retirement money for alimony. He's still living his life in misery. Monica is also a debt-ridden woman, and there is no way a man would ever remarry her if he is a sane person. She seems to be working in a harsh working environment, since she seemed to have run through her savings with the alimony payments. As for me, I have been paid a lot of money. But don't do anything special except work. In life, we don't know what's going to happen to us, so I'm trying to do what I want and live modestly. It's like they say: if you were prepared for anything, you were prepared for everything. And I look forward to watching Spanish soap operas every day. Recently, I found someone at work who shares the same interest. 
We are even talking about going to Spain together someday. I'm looking forward to that day. Of course, I'm not going to check the compatibility of our soul vibration. Let's live a peaceful and healthy life today. My goal is to live happier.